Mr. Law, in your testimony, you mentioned the Biden administration's decision to issue EADs or employment authorization documents to millions of illegal aliens. In order to mask the true invasion numbers, uh, Secretary Mayorkas is misusing his parole authority, which is supposed to be offered to illegal aliens on a case-by-case -case basis, but instead the Biden DHS is releasing entire groups of illegal Americans into the country on parole, which removes wait times from asylum laws and instead immediately makes these illegal aliens eligible to work legally. Is that an accurate reflection of your testimony, your understanding of the situation? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, largely so, I would uh, add the qualifier with parole that it's not just a case-by-case -case basis, but it must be for either an urgent humanitarian reason or a significant public benefit. Um, the lack of detention space or the fact that somebody wants to come here but doesn't qualify for a visa meets neither one of those criteria as well. Yeah, I would point out that it's not really a question of not having laws. It's our laws not being followed, as you know. Uh, so EADs can be issued to all aliens who request asylum in the U.S. pending the review of their asylum claims. And it's my understanding the federal government continues issuing EADs to aliens after they've been issued final orders of removal. So in other words, even after a federal immigration judge has found that an, Ill an illegal alien is in the United States, uh, again illegally, and orders him to leave, that alien can still get an EAD and keep working. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That is one of the, the work permit categories that, uh, and then of course, the, the notion of giving someone with an order of supervision, which means they've already received a final order of removal. They've exhausted all avenues of, uh, you know, attempt to stay in this country, and, and this is it. Um, but if you give them a work permit, they're not going to cooperate with getting their visa. They're not going to cooperate with their home country. Um, and I believe they're, we're approaching pretty close to two million um, illegal aliens with final orders of removal that remain in the country. There's nearly two million. So there's nearly two million illegal aliens in the country who've been literally ordered to remove, be removed by a federal immigration judge, but they're still authorized to work by the Joe Biden's Department of Homeland Security, right? I, I believe that's, that's the approximate number. It might be, you know, it's hard to tell this administration that promised to be the most transparent has gone out of their way to hide the work permit data that the Department of Homeland Security keeps track of, but uh, it was, there's over a million um, but that they inherited through the difficulties that um, the sanctuary city states like California um, impeded President Trump's ability to deport illegal aliens, um, and it's only grown from there because this administration's not removing anybody. And you would agree that if they, uh, an illegal is here, but they've got that piece of paper from the government that lets them work legally, they're unlikely to ever leave. Would you? That's absolutely correct. Uh, jumping uh, to uh, Dr. Camerata, I wanted to ask uh, you a, a question with respect to you conducted a report that showed that median weekly earnings for U.S.-born workers without a bachelor's degree increases more during periods of lower immigration than in periods of higher immigration. Can you discuss a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the period 2017, 18, and 19 is interesting because it's a strong economy, and yet the level of immigration actually fell. We don't find that at any other time in the data. Usually immigration goes up when the economy is strong. So some of it seems to have been uh, a reduction in l illegal immigration, and some of it seems to be a reduction in legal immigration. Um, it's hard to parse out exactly. Looks like it's uh, both. But that decline in illegal immigration, in overall immigration, was a period of higher wage growth for Americans uh, without a college degree. Um, and it w grew much faster than in the four and five years before that when the immigration level was higher, even though the economy was also expanding at that time. Interestingly enough, another paper in Economic Review recently comes to pretty much the same conclusion. They look at areas that had traditionally been getting a lot of immigrants in the earlier period, then when there was the slowdown, 2017 to 19, in those high immigration areas where they got less people, um, wages uh, seem to have done much better. And I also found that labor force participation improved during that period um, when immigration was lower. So it's kind of a real world test. And the test seems to show that less immigration is good, at least for the less educated in the United States. Well, I would just add a comment from some of what's been said in the hearing. I, my friends on the other side often want to conflate immigration with the illegal border invasion, and they want to suggest if you criticize the invasion, then you are somehow against immigration when we're the most generous country in the world, historically and currently, where we allow some one million legal immigrants into our country. As Mr. Costa has pointed out, we are a nation of immigrants. We've got many 
uh, m millions of immigrants in our country, and just because you believe that we should control whom we allow into our country and ought to happen lawfully does not mean you're against immigration or merit-based immigration. Uh, with 